What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Hugh here from Creator Up. Today, we're gonna talk about top 10 tips on how to stabilize your VR and 360 video footage with this brand new gimbal system called Guru360. Before I actually talk about the tips, let's just do a basic rundown how to operate this gimbal. So this gimbal right now is all set up right here, as you see, right here. So hold the power button right here. Let me bring it closer right here. Hold the power button right here. Turn it on. And now it's on. As you see, it's on. In all lock mode. The, when, I turn, when I turn my hand, the camera is still pointing toward you. And when I push this button right here for three seconds, actually that is all lock mode right now. So if you want to actually control the direction the camera is pointing, you hit this one, see it turn a little bit. And now if I turn my hand, the camera point that way. Turn my hand, my front of the camera turning that way. And that is a basic usage of this gimbal system. Uh, you can also do it in vert mode. So if you do that, boom. Okay, do a little bit funky stuff, but now it's in invert mode. So as you see, if I move around, the camera is still level, up and down, turn it. The camera is still stay level. So what you do is you record a footage and in post-production, you flip that in Premiere so you have a useful footage. Tip number one, as you see right here, I always attach a tripod leg at the bottom of this gimbal system. Why? Because even this is very light, but when you're holding it for like two or three hours, your hand eventually gets tired. With the tripod leg, you can put the gimbal down anywhere you want in the flat surface, let go your hand, and the camera is stable and it will not fall down and break your gimbal or your camera. So that's why I always put a tripod leg right here. And this one is actually come with the Nikon accessory pack. It's really cool, right? When I try to shoot, I don't want the leg to be in the frame. I just fold it like that. That will be gone in, in the stitching inside the Nikon camera with the Nikon Magic. This leg will be gone completely. So we will not see it. And also give me a second hand, extend it like that. So I can actually do a higher angle, like high angle, low angle, and it's just very convenient, basically extended the gimbal system. So my suggestion is always get a tripod leg, a good one, like this one I have here from Nikon, uh, to attach it on the bottom of the gimbal. So you can rest it when your hand gets tired like that, and you will not worry about the camera fall down and break. Tip number two, before you turn the gimbal on, always, always balance your gimbal. Depending on which camera you have, you might have one, like what I have here, Nikon Key Mission, you might have Gear, you might have Ricoh Theta, you might have like, Kodak Pixel Pro. No matter what camera you have, the first thing you do before you open up the gimbal system is actually balance it. It's very important. If not, the motor will do extra work to try to balance your camera and then create a noise. The higher motor noise you create it, and more noise you will record it in your camera. So how to do that, I will show you really quickly how to balance your gimbal. So I will first take the camera off. And when you first get the gimbal, you get this weight right here. I take them off. <clears throat> yeah, it should be really tight. Okay, I take them off. So put it front, you can see what's going on. So the first thing you do is this weight, and you try to attach it here. So depending on your camera, it's a diagram from the menu. You should see what camera use what kind of weight. And for my Nikon Key Mission, um, it's actually a very heavy camera. I'll put the weight at the very bottom, but pay attention, the motor is right here, right? So I'll try to balance it. The very bottom one is actually should be on the other side of the gimbal, like that. Let's screw it back in. And this one, we gotta put in the hole above of the bottom one, like right there. Do that. Okay, screw it in, screw it tight. So it's kind of balanced, it's not really. You gotta still need to put the camera on, right? So, so where should I position the camera? 
So remember, Nikon Kimetri have a stitching line, right? Turn it right here. And here is a stick out part. So I want to put this on the stitch line. So when Nikon stitch it, like when Nikon do its magic to stitch inside the camera, just cut this part out. That's what I want to do. So, okay, let's just attach the camera. So now you need to move the camera front and back to try the right weight balance. So oh, let go, it's actually pretty fun, Harry. Okay, I move the front. Okay. Lock it. So now look at that. My Nikon key mission is perfectly center of the gimbal system without it turning on. So now it's balanced. So now it's safe to turn the gimbal on. And next step, I gotta teach you how to calibrate the gimbal system with your camera with the mobile app. Tip number three, calibrate your gimbal system with the mobile app. So now I have the mobile app downloaded, which is, is the Moza Assistant Assist. So first thing I do is gotta turn the gimbal on. Yeah, now the gimbal is on. Is it on? Yeah, it's on. So on the app, you see here, I'll hit search to find my gimbal. I pick it, and now it will connect to the gimbal system. The first thing you do is actually turn off the motor. And now the motor is off, and then you hit calibration. The first thing to calibrate is gyro calibration. So you hit that, and make sure that, again, the gimbal is on a tripod leg, on a steady surface with the camera attached already, and then you can start calibrate. It's calibrating. And now calibration success. So next thing to calibrate is the assess uh, is accelerator meter calibration. I can never say that word. So hit that. So see the instruction right here. Make sure the surface is level. It's actually level right now. I will start calibrate. It's calibrating right now. And then calibration success. So now my gimbal is perfectly calibrated. I will turn it off. Okay, it's off. Okay, let's turn it off. And now you can actually disconnect the mobile app. You don't need that anymore. Turn it back on. And now your gimbal is calibrated correctly with Nikon K Mission camera. Tip number four try to use a mobile app to do remote control of your gimbal. So when your gimbal when your camera is on the gimbal and on a tripod and being stationary, you can add movement on your static shot to try to guide viewer where to look. And you can easily done by hiding yourself and control the gimbal with the mobile app. Again, open the mobile app, right? Go ahead and search, find a gimbal, and connect. And then in here, in here, where is that? Where is that? Yes, in remote, right here, and then you can control the turn of the camera. Back moving it. Look, 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 look at the camera. It's turning, turning the other way. See? So you can do this control remotely, hiding yourself and control the camera and add movement into a static shot. Tip number five, travel with your gimbal. You have a gimbal system, you don't want to put it in a stationary tripod. You want to move it with you. So I think one good thing about a gimbal system is unlock something that is really hard or expensive to do is actually create a moving journey with the subject matter. In this case, it will be me. So I gotta bring the audience, which is the camera, right, into my world, and I will introduce them with the environment around me by me moving around with the camera. So that's what I mean, travel around with your camera. Moving. Not with your head moving like that, but with you physically moving to different interesting location. To make it easier, just think about the camera is actually a person, right? He's your friend. He gonna travel with you in your environment and you're gonna show him what is cool out there because again it's a 360 camera it capture 
everything around you. So you need to tell them where to look so they know, the audience know where to look. It's interesting. To create this journey to travel together is what makes the gimbal special. Tip number six, try not to move your gimbal up and down while moving. So now you're gonna travel with your gimbal right now, right? But when you move around, try to keep your hand steady as well. I mean, think about if that is a human being, that is his eye, when he travel, he's not gonna grow taller or turn shorter. So if you're moving your hand like that when you're moving around, that is very like disorienting for the viewer when they're wearing a 360 goggle. So think about in their perspective, what you try to film with the gimbal. You don't want to do that because you don't want to make them sick. So tip number six is, why are you moving with the camera? Try to keep your hand as steady as possible. See my posture right here? It's a good posture. You create the L shake with your arm. Try to hold your arm, try to hold this, this part of your arm pretty tight to your body and create an L shape. It's actually pretty steady when you move around with your gimbal. Obviously, don't hit some, anything, right? But when you move around like that, it's actually pretty steady. Uh, if you don't have a strong arm, you can also hold two hands like that. And move it in the centers. Hold two hands like that and move around. Then it's also make sure that the camera is not going up and down, but it's front and back. That is the direction you want to move. Tip number seven. Always use an external audio recorder. So a lot of people complain about this gimbal because when it turns on, you can hear a motor humming noise out from the motor here and here. And when the camera in recording mode, you can record the noise. And that is actually an issue right now. And I can hear the noise as well. But the thing is, my question to you is, if you're gonna create an immersive experience, are you gonna use the audio inside a camera? For me, I would not. I would actually use an external audio recorder like right now, I'm locking myself in with a zoom recorder right here. You see right here, that's my recorder. And that same go with the 360 footage. You should just attach or hide this zoom somewhere, maybe on a different hand, or your other hand in your back pocket, or somewhere, you try to record the audio around you. But not using the audio directly in the camera because even in the DSLR, I would not use an internal audio. It's not gonna sound great or good in a way that just unusable. For me, if you want professional sounding audio quality, you will use an external video, or, sorry, external audio recorder and then sing it in post-production. Tip number eight, if you don't own an external audio recorder or you just wanna capture environment noise or you just don't have the time to set that up, that happened to me as well. So now you end up with a noisy humming footage directly from your camera. But there is so many ways to get rid of it in post-production. I actually make a detailed tutorial to teach you how to get rid of that noise very easily, free. So I'll put the link below and check out that video below and learn how to get rid of that humming noise or any noise out from the audio from the key mission or from your 360 video camera and make it professional sounding. Think about creative filming angle. So beside that, which is the front mode, this camera come in uh, inverted mode. Let me just turn it off. Is it off? Yeah, it's off. And I inverted the camera right there. And turn it back on again. Okay, you try to do the thing, find a balance point. Great. So now it's in inverted mode. Uh, why is so cool? It's just like any gimbal. Sometimes just imagine a low angle. It's actually cool. So think about like if you're feeling an animal, like a dog, a cat. Their eye level is actually pretty low and you want to try to picture their angle, their world and you can put the camera as low and next to your dog or your cat and then travel the world with them and create an immersive animal environment that usually people cannot do. And you can cut through grasses, cut through environment in a low angle like that. 
because that is creative using of the CC camera that before is impossible. And now, thanks to this gimbal, it's possible. So if you have any creative idea, you should use that, use that angle. Number 10, creative way to use your gimbal. So yes, this is a 360 video camera gimbal and designed for camera like Nikon Commission or Samsung gear. But this is a trick that they haven't tell you that you can actually attach a traditional camera like a phone, it will also work or like a GoPro. So I'll take my key mission off right here. And here I have a Samsung phone. And here I have this like really cheap you can get on eBay. It's just a camera clamp. Cost like three bucks. And I basically clamp it right, right there. Clamp it with my phone. And here I have a quarter inch screw right here. You can attach directly on the gimbal. And I'm gonna do it now. Is the gimbal on? No, it's not on. Okay. So what I would do is exactly what I teach you, right? Find the center waypoint. Attach it. Okay, now it's balanced. I'll flip it because the, the camera is right here. And I turn the gimbal on. Boom! Now I turn the 360 gimbal into a cell phone gimbal. So when you're tired of making 360 video, you can turn your camera into a camera phone and do some 2D footage, maybe overlay onto your 360 video footage. But this gimbal is very versatile. So these are the top 10 tips to how to use this gimbal system to stabilize my 360 video footage. Hope you learned something as well. And again, if you have any question, please comment below. And if you like this video, please give me a thumb up and subscribe to my channel. That will really help me a lot to continue making content for you guys. So I will see you next time.